Hey, welcome back to the Zero to Master Academy, where we teach you how to go from zero to mastery in the tech industry. My name's Justin, and I'm currently a senior in college studying computer science, but I've been self-teaching myself web development for the last three years through a multitude of online resources, and mainly including the Zero to Master Academy. When I graduate this June, I'll be working as a full-time software engineer at Amazon. And this is actually why today's topic is so special to me, because I thought it was impossible for me to get into a top tech company. And you might actually wonder why. Well, it's essentially because when I was going to school, I ended up being hospitalized for overstress and overwork. And when I finally got out, it was time for my final exams, which you could imagine how well that went considering that I couldn't study in the hospital. So my grade dropped all the way from a 3.3 down to a 2.8. And I thought that it was impossible for any top tech company to want to hire me. But thankfully, the reality was far from that. Tech companies have a very methodical way of hiring candidates. And as long as you know how to play that game, you can actually still get hired. So through a lot of hard work and through studying very methodically to pass these top tech companies interviews, I was actually able to get an internship at Amazon and obviously has now converted into a full-time offer. But the thing is, I'm not just an outlier. I actually ended up taking what I learned throughout that entire process and teaching my friends and peers, and they all got into top tech companies too. And the thing is, some of them did not even start off as a CS major originally. Some of them originally started off as an English major, finance major, health major. And I think the thing is that it goes to show as long as you know how to play the game, you can capture this piece of opportunity for yourself too. So if you're interested in the tips and tricks on how to get into these top tech companies, make sure to stick around for the rest of the video. So onto the actual overview of today's video. We're going to be covering three things today. Number one, the timeline of the entire process. Number two, how to study for the technical portion of the interview. And number three, the behavioral portion of the interview. So first up is the timeline. And obviously in order to start this entire process off, you just need to start applying. So for students, I highly recommend to apply between September 1st and September 30th. This is just because this is the optimal time in which recruiters have job applications out and in which they're actually processing applications. Obviously, it is always better late than never, but the further you get away from that September deadline, the harder it will be to hear back. Now, if you're already in industry, then you should just be applying at any time. The main thing that I get asked about is do referrals help in this entire process? And for students, I'm actually going to say no, it doesn't seem to really help. So for me, when I went through the entire interview process with Facebook, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, whether or not I had a referral did not seem to really help me at all. This is also just because the student track tends to have much more resources dedicated to actually processing through students. Now, if you're already in industry, then yes, I would say a referral will help you greatly boost your chances of hearing back after you apply. So after you finish applying, what should you expect? You, well, you should expect to get an online assessment or an OA, where essentially it is a time exam where you need to solve a data structure or algorithm question, or otherwise known as a technical question, and I'll actually be giving an example of this later on in the video. And this is really the weeding out portion of the interview, and it's supposed to cut out anyone who hasn't been studying for these sort of interviews right then and there which is why it's so important to actually be studying for these interviews. So next is a phone interview. So after you pass the online assessment, you should be reached out to by a recruiter and asked when to schedule a phone interview. And essentially all this is, is also just a live data structure and algorithm questions. And you will be paired with a software engineer from the company where you have to essentially explain on the spot how you would go about solving this question. And finally, after that will be the final round, where it is essentially just more data structures and algorithm questions, along with a mix of behavioral interview, so that the interviewers can see a bit more about your personality and how you would respond in different situations. So on to actually how to study for the technical interviews. As you can see, whether or not it is the online assessment, the phone interview, or the final interview, you will be asked a technical question. Well, what is a technical question? Here is an example. On the screen, you're going to see a very famous problem called the two sum problem. We're given an array full of numbers. Can you find two pairs of numbers that add up to the target number? And this is the exact differentiator that the companies are looking for. If you say just brute force the problem, that is not that optimal. You can imagine that if you were Google with a million users, they don't need a solution where you say brute force every single possibility. Instead, you need to come up with a solution that's more optimal and you need to prove and understand why it is more optimal in order to solve this sort of problem. So I'm not going to get into the solution of the problem here in this video because that could be an entire thing by itself, but I will go on to recommending resources on how to actually study in order to solve these types of problems. Now there are so many different types of resources out there, so I can't recommend a specific one to you, but I will instead give you tips and tricks on what to look out for in the resources, and I will actually recommend a couple from our own academy at the end of the section. 
So first up, you want to make sure that your resource actually walks you through the thought process and the analysis of the problem. And the reason why I give this disclaimer is because there are actually two big resources in the space that I don't recommend to use, at least when starting out, which is LeetCode and Cracking the Coding Interview. Because they are closer to just a textbook of problems with solutions to them, but they don't actually walk you through thoroughly on setting a good foundation. To me, it is equivalent of handing a student a calculus textbook and saying, go learn calculus, but the book only has calculus problems and solutions to the problems. Like yes, you could somehow learn calculus by looking at a problem, looking at the solution, backtracking through it all, but the problem is that the student doesn't have any foundation. It would be a lot easier if you just taught the student the fundamentals of calculus and then get them problems to practice on. But I see too many people just start decoding, just start trying to solve these technical questions, but it is very, very difficult and it's very hard to progress because you don't necessarily know how everything connects together. Which is why whatever resources you do look for, you want to make sure that it fulfills showing you the analysis and the thought process once again. But saying that, I'm going to recommend two of our Academy's own courses if you are interested. In it. The first one is going to be Master the Coding Interview, which is really good for absolute beginners. So if you don't know about time and space complexity or about data structures, this is where you want to start. It's going to set you on a really good foundation, and the really nice thing is that even though it's taught in JavaScript, the community has come together to translate it into a variety of programming languages, including Python, Java, Go, etc. The second resource that I'm going to recommend is Master the Coding Interview Big Tech. So this course is really good for those who already have a bit more of their foundation underneath them, and it's really good for high-level analysis and deconstructions of problems, which is actually super important in these FANG interviews because you need to be able to explain your thought process, and you can imagine that if you get a problem right on the spot, you need to be able to go through and analyze it well, even if you've never seen it before. And I have even personally used Master the Coding Interview Big Tech for my own interview preparation. And now finally onto the final part of the video, which is all about the behavioral interview. So while the technical portion of the interview is the most important part, the behavioral interview can really be a make or break moment. A lot of people actually end up reaching the final round of an interview, but they end up not passing through because the interviewer just didn't like them enough. And so I really have three main tips to look out for whenever doing a behavioral interview. The first one is going to be all about body language. So make sure that you're smelling, make sure that you're not sighing, make sure that you're not using filler words like ums and likes. For example, when I first started interviewing, I was actually pretty weak at it. So this is an example of how I used to introduce myself. Hi, um, my name is Justin and I'm currently a senior at NYU studying computer science. Um, versus through a bit more refinement, I was able to say something closer to, Hi, my name is Justin. I'm currently a senior at NYU studying computer science and I do full stack web development. Hopefully you're able to see that the first one is weaker. It's not necessarily bad, but it doesn't come off as confidently to an interviewer as compared to someone who is a bit more practiced, a bit more refined. The second part of the behavior interview that I think is super important is bullet pointing as you go. So what do I mean by this? I mean, anytime you answer a question, you should be giving an overview of what your answer actually is. For example, anytime I asked about team conflict, I usually say something similar to this. Well, if I ever came in conflict with a team member, there are three steps that I would take in order to approach the situation. First one is that I'll be empathetic to where they are coming from. I want to understand their different perspective. The second part is that I'm going to work towards a compromise between the person I'm in conflict with and myself. And finally, I'll actually make sure that we follow through on a compromise because we want to make sure that whatever we say is not just words, but we actually take that into action. So as you can see, I sort of gave an overview as I went and I bullet pointed as I go. The reason why this is so powerful is because the interviewer needs to note down what you're saying. So by giving an overview, you not only make it easier for the interviewer, but you actually also as a side effect, make it easier for yourself. You sort of start to organize your train of thought and so that you don't begin to ramble on, which was actually my problem during the behavioral interviews when I first started. So the last part of the interview process is really about making a strong impression. So besides just speaking confidently, I also find that a lot of people waste the end of the interview when they ask, well, do you have any questions for me? And this is going to get a bit psychoanalytical here, but I'm going to walk you through my thought process. At the end of an interview, an interviewer needs to circle a strong no, no, yes, or yes. 
So the idea becomes, how do you get them to circle that strong yes? Well, when they ask, do you have any questions? A lot of people seem to just ask, can you tell me a bit more about your company? Which in my opinion, you're going to get such a brain dead automatic response and that you're not going to be that memorable to the interviewer, especially after an hour of interviewing. Because you could imagine that the interviewer is a bit fatigued. Whereas I think if you ask the right types of question, you can sort of engage their brain process a bit more. So for example, these are two questions that I like to ask. Number one, if a new software engineer joined your company, do you have any top three advice that you would get them in order to best succeed? Or number two, is there something about the company value or the way that it's operated that has made you stay at the company for so long? So hopefully, I think as you can see, these questions actually forces a bit more of a thought process. It forces the interviewer to think a tiny bit more and at the end, maybe leaves a better impression. Now, obviously this is a bit more of psychoanalytical, who knows if this actually works, but I still think that at every step with the behavior interview, you should be working towards making a good impression, no matter how subtle that is, because that could make the difference between getting an offer or a rejection. Anyways, that's it for the video. If you thought it was helpful, make sure to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. And if you guys have any comments on what you would like to see next in the future, leave it down below in the comments. I'll be reading through every single one of them, and it will definitely help dictate where this channel will go in the future. Because the goal of this channel is to help you go from zero to mastery. Anyways, see you guys next time, and make sure to subscribe once again so that you guys will see our next video.